Welcome to today's special Extelligent Healthcare event presented by Airstrip, Physician Burnout, How Poor Efficiency Impacts Retention. Physician burnout has reached epidemic levels with more than 60% reporting signs of burnout. The causes vary, but system inefficiencies and administrative burdens are certainly part of the problem. Hospitals are taking a closer look at burnout and implementing solutions that streamline workflows to increase retention and satisfaction, as well as improve safety. I'm Kyle Murphy, Vice President of Editorial at Extelligent Healthcare, and today I'm joined by Rory Nellis, Chief Commercial Officer at Airstrip. Welcome, Rory, and before diving in, tell us a bit about yourself and your work. Yeah, hey, Kyle. First off, thanks for having me on the uh, show today. Uh, a little bit about my background and the work we do at Airstrip uh, is really focused in the critical care environments. Um, I spent the last 12 years in the space across the emergency ICU, cardiac telemetry, step downs in the perioperative space, working really with capital equipment. Um, and what I learned over that time is, you know, it's really about the clinician workflow and how they touch the devices and the, the various data points uh, in and out of those care units. So my background is really immersed in uh, the inpatient critical care departments. All right. So let's start with big picture. What's been your experience in terms of you know, how do we get to this point with physicians? And like, what is that impact on care delivery, on patient safety? What are you seeing? Yeah, I think how we got to this point, um, as you mentioned, with, with the uh, concept of burnout is just um, loads and loads of data, right? Physicians, clinicians, really, it's not just physicians, but all clinicians, for that matter, just are overloaded um, with copious amounts of data, whether that's coming from disparate devices, um, the medical record, overhead paging, uh, the list goes on and on. And I think um, the, the amounts of that data just causes challenges because they have to ingest it, analyze it and make decisions. And all the while, um, second counts, seconds count. So obviously the, you know, you talk about some critical care environments, a lot of stress, a lot of noise going on there. What impact does this have on, you know, providers wanting and physicians wanting to stay you know, practicing, stay in practice. And what about its impact on recruitment of new physicians and clinicians moving forward? Yeah, I think, you know, um, COVID probably brought this on and then put a magnifying glass on it, but you hear about work-life balance. Um, it's, you know, it's everywhere, um, certainly in our day jobs. So I think, you know, what physicians are looking for is to um, fulfill their goal of why most got into medicine, which is to take care of people, not to manage data. And so I think that contributes to um, sort of a happiness level, if you will, and how they go about their day shift um, and how increasingly um, difficult that's become because of the amounts of interruptions, data, and it's a stressful job. You're trying to take care of people um, and be compassionate about it, and distractions um, play a role in that. Now, in healthcare, there's no shortage of processes. There's no shortage of technology in this space, but how you know how is technology kind of contributing to a lot of the physician burnout we're seeing today um, before we kind of get into what a potential solution might look like? Yeah, I've heard it um, sort of phrased different ways um, throughout the last decade, but it's like, does the technology work for you or do you work for the technology is kind of the um, the theme that rings uh, in my mind when you pose that question. And, and it's really coming down to, are you having to spend more time with the technology than you desire to based on the value it's providing to help you accomplish uh, the work you need to do within a given shift? What what departments are, does it vary across the health system where, you know, provider burnout is, is more significant or more salient? You know, you talk about critical care, um, but there's obviously a lot of physician shortage across the healthcare system. So I'm curious, um, are some departments faring worse than others? Yeah, I think that's probably true, especially when you think about the space that um, you know we occupy and it gets into the staffing ratios based on you know how much staff is available to run a given unit. And of course, with staffing shortages, you have to stretch that a little bit, right? So I think that definitely plays a role into the concept of burnout. But I think it's experienced in all care units, regardless of uh, patient acuity, because um, as staffing levels change, when you get into the step down units or the wards, um, your ratios are one to four, one to six. We're even seeing some go beyond one to six. Um, that means you're stretched more, but you're also um, working with less critical patients, if that makes sense. Not to say they're not risky. They are. Um, 
But in an ICU, you're one to one, but you have more acuity to sort of deal with and uh, ingest. And so the problem still in lies. What are you What are you hearing in terms of uh, leadership at these different organizations? How they are approaching it currently? What are you know they, they organizing committees? What are they doing to really get feedback from their providers? And then, you know, what's how are they thinking about it strategically? Yeah, I think most health systems we we uh, work with have um, organized different types of committees. There's alarm management committees. There's steering committees. There's technology committees. There's care delivery committees. Um, so there are no shortage of committees to deal with the complexity of the problem we're talking about, um, certainly. So I think hospitals are trying their best to deal with it. Technology, again, is great. If it simplifies things, it can be a burden if it does not. And so there are technology committees dedicated to this work of how do we bring a technology into the health system that's going to address things like burnout while addressing sa patient safety. Now, a lot of the data points to technology being you know, a major contributor to the provider experience, at least the negative experience that we're seeing. So how does how does technology then be, you know, become part of the solution? We just went through a really transformative decade in terms of, you know, EHR and health IT adoption, went through the pandemic, saw a lot more adoption during that period of time. So there's no shortage of technology. But I guess how can maybe additional technology be layered into the mix and maybe take out some of the noise that's that's already in the system? Yeah, to me, um, it comes down to, are you putting a technology in the clinician's hands that simplify what they need to do? So when you're uh, addressing a patient or a number of patients, there's things you need to do that require you to visit the room, visit the nurse's stations, um, visit the EMR. Um, some of those things are physical and some of those are in and out of various applications. So the goal for us is, can we introduce a technology that provides a great value proposition, but minimal interaction, which sounds sort of counterintuitive, right? We want folks in our application, but we also want to balance that with understanding they have complex problems they're trying to address. Um, and we fulfill a role of which we're serving information to them where they are, and therefore reducing the amount of checks they have to do in the EMR, number of trips to the nurse's station and number of trips to the patient room. And we're trying to do that at scale um, with a simple approach. You know, how do you leverage the technology that that folks have just as consumers? You know, obviously we've got smartphones out there that have incredible adoption. We see folks across demographics able to use this technology so easily, you know, and now it's part of everyday life. Uh, but for some reason in healthcare, there were kind of bespoke systems and they weren't kind of leveraging this existing technology that clearly had the user in mind. I'm curious, how can you how can you kind of build momentum on technology that already works in someone's everyday life? Our approach to the design element of our application is to mimic what they're used to. So when you visit the Airstrip application, whether that's on your smartphone or it's on your desktop, uh, what you see is what you can interact with, with one or two taps, um, little things like biometric login. So if I hold my application up with my smartphone to my face, does it automatically log me in? That saves a number of clicks and uh, a number of seconds that contribute to another task they can avoid. Um, so it's little things like that, that mimic how our applications work outside the hospital um, and bringing them inside the hospital to then really give that value proposition of why am I going to interact with the airship application? What do I need to see in there? What are these physicians spending their time on if they're not using a technology right now? What are some of like the manual processes that they have to go through? And I'm curious, what's the cost of that? Is it, you know, time, you know, being in the right place at the right time? Yeah, it's it's both of those things. It's time and being in the right place at the right time. And I'll give you a specific example. A lot of times um, we hear within the care units that um, patient monitoring alarms are constantly going off. Um Alarm fatigue is real. We've been dealing with it for a number of years. Um, and so, you know, they're trying to figure out which of these patients are the most critical based on a constant alarm state. Um, and so getting back to um, efficiency and time is if I were able to bring an alert directly to my device and allow that clinician to log in with one, two taps and see exactly what they need to see in that moment where they physically are, I'm going to save that clinician a trip to the central nursing station um, to then have to interact and have a discussion with another colleague, which they might be interrupting their care work that they're doing. 
to get to that piece of critical information for me to then decide, what do I need to do about this patient? What's the next step here? Now, obviously, it's kind of become cliche that healthcare is a laggard when it comes to adopting technology. Um, change management is a is a serious obstacle to overcome for organizations to to get physicians to adopt and use technology the right way to do the right particular thing and gain those efficiencies. Can you talk about what it takes from like a cultural standpoint in the organization to 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 get folks on board and to really start demonstrating? You know what? When you use technology the right way, it's actually going to it's going to realize those those that potential that we were kind of promised and expecting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this sort of goes back to me for the committees, right? So if we introduce our technology to one of the committees that are dedicated on safety, outcomes, efficiency, burnout, um, and we start to address their core problems. We then figure out, okay, how are we going to implement this? And being in the space of interoperability, uh, it is complicated. However, what an implementation looks like is a lot on the front end of IT. So we're actually not interrupting the clinicians until we're ready to introduce the platform for clinical use. Um, so an average installation timeline might be three months. Um, we're going to spend two months doing the uh, IT and integration work. And then that last four weeks, we're going to focus on how do we introduce this new uh, technology to the clinicians to simplify their day job. And the good news about that is we've already generally worked that out with the different committees that we're working with across IT clinical stakeholders. So it's something that's very easy to digest, although it does make a big change uh, day in and day out. How do you um, build on those individual wins so you can start scaling this to the entire, you know, healthcare enterprise, not just, you know, targeted kind of one-off solutions, which plenty of folks don't really enjoy talking about. Um, so I'm curious how you, how you really scale it. Yeah, it's a great question. So generally what we uh, look to achieve with the client in mind is, are we giving a level of benefit to a department? We'll generally get started off in a department or two. Oftentimes it's telemetry. And the reason for that is, goes back to, I think, staffing ratios is like, how do we get the biggest bang for our buck if we're going to implement a new technology? And a lot of times that comes in those units that are stretched extra thin a little bit, right? So we'll go implement our solution um, in something like a med surge unit, a centralized monitoring department, and we'll show the value there. And generally what happens is um, because we're saving clinicians that valuable time, it'll then expand to different departments. We'll make our way into the ICUs and then into the emergency departments, labor and delivery. So a true enterprise platform. And what the general feedback is, this, this is great. This has taken time away from my day shift that I don't have to spend uh, and I can use that time on other things, making my life easier. And that's where we're really getting to that level of, are we addressing burnout? And we routinely hear that, which helps us then scale, not just across the entire hospital, but generally across the health system. Um, we find ourselves installed at systems at scale. So starting with one unit, one hospital, moving across an enterprise standard due to care efficiencies being recognized with the application. How, how should an organization go about evaluating technology you know, with an eye toward or an ear toward usability, because I think it really comes down to usability. Like providers will clearly use a technology if they they feel the benefit, they feel that they're being more productive or they're making better decisions. Yeah, I think we get that question almost every time we are going into a hospital. And uh, it's kind of a simple answer is, is, does this reduce the amount of steps that I have to take in order to do my job? And if that answer is emphatically yes, then it's almost a no-brainer and we start the implementation work. Where do, you know, where do we look for to see kind of to to measure kind of the key performance indicators? You know, you've been you've emphasized to me the importance of time and time to decision. You know, does that end up reflecting in patient outcomes? Do we see improvement in kind of efficiency, but also quality of care? Absolutely. So we measure um, what I'll say is impact a couple of different ways. Us here at the on the airstrip side, we'll measure impact by user adoption. So um, number of logins per day, number of patients seen within the application. Um, we measure those things and constantly see improved adoption. Um, and it's day by day. Um, for the clinicians on the hospital side, they'll measure that through both adoption and impact. 
One example um, that comes to mind immediately with that is a, a client we worked with um, where we were delivering um, STEMI notifications to the providers on their smartphones. Um, that patient could be coming in from the ambulance. That patient could be in a critical care department in the emergency room. And what still today is has some paper process to it, we transform that to being all electronic. And so if we can deliver a 12 lead EKG that is classified as a potential STEMI directly to the provider that needs to see it, bypass some paperwork, bypass physical human steps and communication challenges, um, we have shown outcomes on that where we have impacted mortality at scale. Uh, and so for me, it's adoption on the tech side, measurement of patient outcomes on the hospital side. You know, there's a lot of talk, particularly in the, the value-based care world, about how, just how important care coordination is. But we know that there are breakdowns in communication between and across providers just because of the nature of the workforce, people working in shifts. How important is it to have technology kind of as the linchpin to make sure that, you know, it's really not the information that's that's slowing things down and it's allowing patients to really benefit from all the, the care team members being literally on the same page? Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, I'll probably show that really quickly here, um, if I might. So the ability to assess a patient uh, information would look something like this in our application. I want to check in on that last patient there. That's George Russell. He's in the ICU. I'm going to tap on George. I immediately want to see what's happening with his live streaming patient monitor. Here, I can see what cardiac rhythms are taking place right now as if I'm standing in the room, but I might actually be on call at my kid's soccer game, or I might be on the fourth floor of the hospital where this patient is physically residing on another floor. So that literally just eliminated physical steps and time to criticality to assess this patient. Now that I've assessed this patient, I might want to see what other events have taken place. And I see here that there might be a critical ST infarct happening. After assessing this infarct, I can choose that bottom right button there, which is to share this information. So I want to share this information with an, a colleague for an instant consult. And as I select Dr. Tim Jones from the bottom, I have the ability to type a message, send Dr. Jones a push notification that would allow him or her to take a second assessment on the patient and have immediate answers on what to do next, coordinating course of care which is addressing what you just brought up on communication challenges. Because if I didn't have this application and wasn't able to do that, I might be looking at multiple phone calls, physical steps back to that nursing station to assess this patient's waveforms and have to do that now with two people and potentially more depending on the criticality. So we're really bypassing many steps that ultimately push care delivery timeframes out by bringing the efficiency directly to the fingertips of the providers and the clinicians at whole. What's the feedback from clinicians? Obviously they have a lot of influence in terms of influencing other providers. You know, there's no, there's no stronger, you know, super user for any technology than someone just like you using it. What do you hear from like the before and after um, of, of being able to access real time information? Yeah. Um, one of the most recent quotes I actually heard um, this week was, if we had this application, it would make my day job so much easier. Uh, and you can hear in that statement, there's passion from the clinicians because you know they're overwhelmed. You know physician burnout's a real thing. And so um, the before and after is we're saving them time. Uh, and that might seem you know like a small thing, but it's, it's a really big thing when you can save seconds upon minutes uh, and do that 100 times a day. Uh, and then ultimately what that means for a provider is an easier shift, uh, less things to manage, uh, more time with patients, and ultimately that's going to drive outcomes. And then kind of closing out here, I guess, what's your level of optimism that uh, technology like this similar is actually able to to kind of to, to turn the tide on on physician burnout and actually get to a point of you know, these folks actually enjoying what they do, which is, you know, we call a vocation. Um, and then that bleeding out to the rest of the system so that we as patients benefit from, you know, our our caregivers actually being able to, to thrive. You know, you might say, of course, Rory, you're going to say this next statement, but <laughs> I actually believe it. I think based on the work we've been doing over the last decade beyond uh, and the amounts of feedback we get from pre and post deployments, around how we are addressing burnout and patient safety simultaneously, 
I think um, we're optimistically looking to the future here because I truly believe that every hospital across the country should have Airstrip uh, in their clinicians' hands to better take care of patients and the communities they serve. Um, if I went to a hospital or my family went to a hospital, I would expect them to have access to, to my family member at any moment of the day. And that's exactly what we provide so that we can provide the most efficient way to take care of our loved ones. And we'll end it on that. Rory, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you to our audience for watching. Take care, everyone.